I've been thinking about what's usually called the, the hard problem of consciousness, which is something that the philosopher David Chalmers first named, uh, and which is this pro well, it's, sometimes, it's usually put as this problem about how, kind of how neat can think, really. That seems to be the, the gist of how it's usually phrased. Uh, I think it's uh, Francis Crick calls it this astounding hypothesis that uh, inert matter, just, you know, basically carbohydrates and hydrocarbons and all the stuff that we're made out of, how that can give rise to this phenomenal experience of consciousness. Um, and that's, it's called the hard problem, not, well, it's called the hard problem for a number of reasons, but the, the reason why I think it's called the hard problem isn't that it's hard to figure out, uh, which of course it is, but it's not, it's, it's, it's more that it's hard to figure out how we might, we might go about figuring it out. Because um, it's hard to think about, and it's almost impossible to talk about. Uh, certainly when I talk about consciousness, and quite often when I read about consciousness, actually I'll, I'll come back to this reading about it in a minute. Certainly when I talk about consciousness, it feels like I'm trying to do... Um, it feels like I'm trying to do brain surgery with a spanner, something like that. There's, there's this, the, the language that I've got to talk about it, and the ideas that I've got to, um, to kind of wield, to, to uh, excavate and uncover this thing, it just seem too clumsy and too crude. Uh, and I'm just wondering about that, really. And really, that's my take on this hard problem of consciousness. Not so much to do with how we can think, but... Um, why it is that um, language and thought is incapable, or seems to me at least, incapable of addressing what consciousness is. And I should say, of course, that there are people who say there isn't a hard problem. Dan Dennett says there's no such thing as a hard problem. It's just a failure of imagination, I guess, or a failure to understand. And, um, and brains just do think that's what they do, and we should just leave it at that. And that, yeah, I've got some... Um, some um, I've got some allegiance to that idea as well, but, I just, but it, it is still confusing. At least I still find it confusing why it is that, um, that our words and our thoughts seem so inadequate to the task of thinking about something like consciousness. Uh, I, think, I think there's a number of... Well, the, the way I'm thinking about it right now, and I may be way off the beam here, but um, the way I'm kind of imagining it is we've got this thing called a brain, and I'm assuming mind and brain and consciousness are, are supervening to each other. We've got this thing called a brain, and it's incredibly complex. We know that. It's got all these connections, but even beyond the kind of connectivity of it, it's incredibly complex. There seems to be some kind of, possibly have some kind of quantum computing going on in there. Um, it's, a, it's just vastly complex, and it's undergoing processes that we can only really address through mathematics and through um, scientific procedures, which are, uh, you know, require special languages to talk about. And even then, we only know very little about the brain, really. Uh, but So we have this brain, and this brain is doing this thing called, uh, called a mind. And I think it's doing it rather than owning it. But there's some kind of, there's some kind of activity that the brain does which seems to generate uh, cognitive activity, but in the broadest sense, both conscious and non-conscious, called the mind. And then this mind, whatever that is, this process, seems to be... Uh, either generating or seems to implicate or involve this other uh, process called consciousness where we, as I say, we have this feeling of being awake and feeling of being uh, sensorially aware of the world and so on and of ourselves and you know, you know, all that kind of thing. So we have this thing called the mind and then we have, and it generates this thing called consciousness. Um, and then within that consciousness, here I am conscious, and I'm generating this thing. My consciousness seems to be generating this thing called um, myself, or and with all those things to do with will and intentions and agency, uh, and also generating this thing called language. It seems to possess this thing called language. Uh, I know the language is very sloppy here, the way I'm talking about it. I recognise that, but um, that's kind of how it feels, that my consciousness is... is uh, impelling itself through a language that it, that it kind of contains, in inverted commas. Uh, and that's the language that I'm trying to, to mobilise to talk about consciousness. 
So that seems doomed to failure, really. I, I suppose the, the analogy that I've got here is, uh, and this is, uh, again, uh, not probably the best analogy, but the analogy I've got for why I think that's probably uh, a, an impossible task is to do with emulation. Um, it's certainly possible to use one kind of machine to emulate another machine. You can get a, a, a PC computer and you can emulate a Commodore 64 on it or you can emulate a ZX Spectrum or you can, you can, you can run simulations of, other mach of, of computers inside, uh, inside different computers. Or if you, in video games, I used to, many years ago I used to have a Dreamcast uh, console and it was possible to run an emulation of a Game Boy inside it. So you could play Game Boy games in, kind of inside the Dreamcast. So you can emulate. Um, and emulating is a little bit like um, kind of running a virtual machine, I think. And that's kind of how I'm imagining the, this concatenation of different entities. You know, the, the brain kind of runs the software, if you like, of, uh, of the mind, and the mind kind of runs this virtual machine of consciousness and consciousness kind of runs this virtual machine of self-awareness and language plays into that somewhere. Um, but one of the key things about emulation is that the, the machine that's being emulated can't be more powerful than the machine that's doing the emulating. So whilst you can run um, a virtual Commodore 64 inside um, I don't know, a, a modern PC, for obvious reasons, I hope, you can't run, you can't emulate a modern PC inside an old Commodore 64. You know, the, the, the processing power of the, emu, of the machine that's doing the emulating has to be far more than the machine that's being emulated. And if something like that plays out in consciousness and plays out in that whole chain of, um, of mental activities, then there's the, some things follow from that. The brain is inevitably going to be more complicated than the activity it produces, I think. So the brain is going to be more complex than the mind. And the mind, running this virtual machine of consciousness, is going to be more com complicated and uh, unfathomable than the mind. And similar, than, I beg your pardon, than consciousness. And consciousness, in turn, is going to be more complex and more, uh, uh, yeah, more difficult to... to understand than the kind of little virtual machine of this kind of self self image self awareness and probably than the language that that self image construct um, than even consciousness itself uh, so I think given that chain it's going to be almost impossible I suspect to to stand here where we stand quite near the bottom of that chain uh, and and use the tools that are around us, these, the spanners, if you like, that are lying around at this level of, of emulation and this level of virtual machinic instantiation to examine the, uh, the machines that are, that are, that are uh, at, at higher levels of complexity. I don't know if that's true or not. But I quite like that. I mean, it sounds, uh, it sounds a bit negative. I don't want, I don't, I'm not kind of throwing my hands up in despair and saying, oh, we'll never understand it, because I don't think that's the case at all, really. Uh, but uh, we certainly won't understand it in the way we understand the things around us. We understand the things around us in very simple ways. But I think the, um, if we want to try to understand more, um, these, these more complex entities, we have to use different tools and I think that's where some of the poetry happens, actually. I quite like the, the, uh, the difficulty of trying to apply a spanner to a brain or the, 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 um, the, the, the degree of clumsiness that, that you inevitably fall into when you're trying to describe and trying to understand something that is uh, not of an appropriate scale, if you like, or that doesn't have the same kind of... Uh, limitations that you yourself have. I, I enjoy that challenge, and, and I think there's some very interesting kind of uh, material generated by that, at the point of that limitation. I probably spoke for too long here, but just the last thing I wanted to say, really, which is, I guess, kind of related to that, that is that one of the uncertainties that I have about a lot of the things that I say, I guess, and some of the things I hear is. Um, it's not so much that I sometimes feel myself making claims or, um, or generating ideas which are spurious, 
although I'm, I'm sure I do, it's more the fact that sometimes I find myself talking about things like consciousness in a way which feels more lucid than I think it perhaps should. You know, we, we are the kind of creatures we are, and we are the virtual machines way down that chain of command, if you like, that, 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 that I just described. And uh, it shouldn't necessarily feel lucid describing complex entities. It sh but, I, but I do sometimes think that some of the language that's generated around this gives this illusion of precision and this illusion of coherence and... Uh, and a kind of penetration into those kind of mysteries, if you like. I don't really like the word mystery, but a kind of penetration into that, which is um, comforting, perhaps, and does give one a sense of understanding. But I'm not really sure if understanding is there. I think a lot of understanding is about...